All right, 7.21. This has a lot of nets in it. So this really makes you need to know how nets work. So it's a little annoying. But we're just going to go through the uh, notation and hopefully it won't be too bad. So let mu sub b, where b is in script b, be just a shorthand notation of the collection of all mu b's such that b is an a and b is finite. Which is partially ordered such that mu of b is squiggly less than or equal to mu c precisely when b is contained in c. Then mu sub b, um, I'll just leave it like that, is a net in the closed ball, which I'll denote by b bar in mx. And that's because we know by assumption that each mu b is less than or equal to 1. By the allo igloo guy, however you spell it, b bar is compact. So by the way, this, this, uh, this topology that we're using on b bar is the weak star topology, which is sort of like the vague topology, except vague is where you phrase things in terms of measures, and weak star or just weak is where you term where you phrase things in terms of functionals. But as we know from the Ries representation theorem, they're really the same thing. So B bar is compact. So there is a subnet nu gamma, gamma in C, uh, paired with phi from C to script B. I'm going to call this D here, just so that there's no confusion, because if there's any room for confusion, it'll just completely blow up because there's so much notation going on here. So this, so phi goes from here to here, such that nu gamma converges vaguely in b bar to some mu, we'll call it. And this will also be in b bar. So this mu will certainly have norm less than or equal to one, so that's good. Um, let's re let's remember what this means to be a subnet. Uh, so then, for all b in script b, there exists a gamma in c such that for all delta in c. If delta is squiggly greater than or equal to gamma in C, then phi of delta is squiggly greater than B, and this is in script B. And furthermore, for all gamma in C, mu sub phi of gamma equals nu gamma. Whew, okay, so I claim for all alpha in A, integral of f alpha d mu equals c alpha. That's exactly what we want to prove here. Um, so let alpha be in A. The singleton set alpha 
is contained in B, so by assumption, the integral of F alpha, oof, no, that's right, F alpha D mu sub singleton set gamma, God, I wish this was a better thing to use. Gammas are hard to write. Not as hard as news, but they're sort of there. So, by assumption, this equals this, period. Uh, wait a minute, where did I get gamma from? Doo -doo -doo. No, this should be singleton set alpha. Right, because this is in script B, and yeah, that works. Right, because singleton alpha, alpha is contained in A, and B is, yeah, this works. Okay, cool. Um, do, 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 where was I? So then, by subnetness, I consider doing subnetity here, but I don't think that's quite as neat. There is a gamma in C such that for all gamma in C, if delta, no, that's delta in C, if delta squiggly greater than gamma, then phi of delta is squiggly greater than the singleton alpha in script B, and also phi of, wait, no, 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 wait, yes, and, wait, yes, and you, God, I gotta write not so clumped together on my notes. So this is equal to this by one of the things that we just proved that we know, yeah, by this thing. Okay, so this equals this. So now since phi delta is greater than squiggly this, then um, what does this mean? This is an inclusion statement about um, the two sets here. Um, so this actually means that alpha is in V of delta. So integral of F alpha, not to be confused with alpha alpha, D nu delta equals integral of F alpha D mu V delta equals C alpha. So this holds, wait, is that what we wanted? No, but it's almost, this holds for all delta squiggly greater than gamma. And so by vague convergence, whew, I'm just gonna fit on this line. Rule of F alpha D mu equals C alpha. Right, and that's all we wanted to show. Yeah, we, so this, this mu that we constructed here is exactly the one we wanted. And so there we go, we are done.